Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we received a package from Advanced Fuel Dynamics in the mail, and that contains the ProFlex Commander Flex Fuel System for the GT350R. So we're going to do an unboxing on that quick, and then get that installed on the 350R, and then head to the pumps for some E85. So stick with us. All right, guys. So here's the box from Advanced Fuel Dynamics. If you can read this here, it's uh, got the part number there, um, and then it does say that this uh, one is for the GT350 and 350R. So I think we've got the right product. So I'll open this up here. Uh, we've got a few things in the box here: stickers with a zip tie. Um, so here is uh, the actual wiring loom that has all the connectors for the fuel injectors, so we're going to have to route all that. Should be fun. Uh, a couple of hoses, so that's for the fuel lines. Um, and then we've got the, uh, the actual module, flex fuel module here. And then this item is the actual uh, fuel sensor, I believe. Um, and I found it interesting that it's uh, a GM part we're putting on our Ford here. So must have been from the parts bin out of a flex fuel, fuel vehicle from, from Chevy of some kind. So, But uh, we're going to go ahead and get out in the garage here. And uh, we'll get the hood opened up and get everything ready to uh, start installing. All right, guys. So I just was in the garage, just lining things up, seeing if I got the right parts and how this fuel line would connect into the existing system. Uh, and I kept going around in my head. I'm like, this is not gonna work with the way it comes out of the by the firewall for the fuel line. Um, and so then I went and looked online. They have photos of the stuff you're supposed to get for the 350 kit and it's only supposed to have one 90 degree bend and the rest is supposed to be straight. So I just went on and talked with uh, the Advanced Fuel Dynamics chat and uh, they confirmed that I got the wrong fuel lines. Um, I mean, like I said, I looked on that sticker on the box and it said it was for the 350, so he assures me the rest of the stuff, uh, the wiring kit and the uh, fuel sensor is gonna be okay in the module, so um, they're gonna send that out to me, but uh, when uh, you get your parts, just make sure that uh, you got the right stuff before you dig into the Hey right, guys, so after the debacle of the wrong fuel hoses, we have the correct one now. They sent it out. It took about three days to get it. But as you can see, it should be a 90 on one end and straight on the other. Um, so we'll just give you a little peek as to where that connects. So right here is the fuel line this guy right here and that's where we got to disconnect it right down in there right there so then that will go on there kind of like that and then over underneath the little plastic cover right here um, and attach the other straight end will attach to the fuel rail right here so we are going to do the fuel lines last so we're going to get started with uh, plugging in the uh, wiring harness here so Let's uh, show you that cable. All right, we got the cabling kind of uh, situated where it needs to be. So they say the longer um, of the sides of the cables, it's only like two inches longer, but find that end. And that side will go over here by the uh, driver's side. And then you do need to have, let's see if we can find it here, this connector right here that goes on the driver's side as well because that's going to plug into the fuel sensor that goes right in line with that the fuel lines so it's got to be on this side as well and then if you come over here get some light over here for you um, this is the main plug for the uh, the uh, module that's going to do all the tuning basically and they say you can there's enough cabling here to mount it somewhere like back in here um, I'm not sure where we're gonna go with it yet but we'll find somewhere over in this area to mount that uh, module once we get it all in place and this side also has the uh, the uh, ground cable and that's gonna go right there with the ground that we already have so that shouldn't be too big of a deal but uh, we need to go ahead and start uh, unplugging all of the uh, fuel injector cables and putting them in line with this cable so um, that's what we're going to start with first here um, 
if you can see them down here right here with the little orange reddish tab here okay so we're just going to show you how these clips come off there's the red spot right there and you just have to lift up on that little tab right there like that. If you have a little flat head that might help too, but once that releases, um, then there's a little push tab right there that you just push in on, and then they pop, uh, pops off just like that. So just go, go slow, make sure you don't break the clips, because that would be bad. Um, but then uh, we put those in line with our uh, new harness. But I'm going to start with the, uh, the back one and work my way forward to the front. So we'll do this one last. All right, guys. To get better access to those back fuel injectors, I'm going to take off the plastic shroud here. Two 10 millimeter bolts, one here. And we've got uh, right. three of them on from the back. Now we're up to this front one. Um, so this connector here, we're going to plug it right down in there, right on that top. on and then we're going to just take the outer end plug it in right here just like that and then you do have to make sure you pop that to red tab back down to secure it just like that and then we've I've been tucking these down in here so to try and make it look a little neater I'm not sure if I have enough slack for when we go across to the module, but we're going to start with that, and then we'll grab some more more cable if we need it, but I don't know if you can see down in there. These are all the new cables right here. Um, so, we got one side down, we're going to go hit the other side, and then... Uh, Try and get the fuel lines hooked up. Alright guys, so I got the whole driver's side done. I got the first one on the back side done on the passenger side. I only had three to go. And look at this crap. If you look at this connector, there's something missing. You should not be able to see through on that left side. It's missing the clip that secures it to the fuel injector. It's like a defect. They sent me a defective wiring harness after they sent me the wrong fuel lines. I think the gods are telling me I wasn't supposed to put this kit on the car, so if I, once I finally get this thing installed, I hope I don't have any issues with the module or the fuel sensor, because so far we're two for four. <laughs> so hopefully the other things are good. But I did not want to wait another week to get this connector, so I called down to Ford, picked up a uh, replacement um, connector for a fuel injector so basically I'm going to take the matter into my own hands splice in the new connector into this and hopefully continue on my way so that's another thing to check guys when you get your kit make sure they all have clips like this one you should have that little clip on the side to secure it so I did check the last two that I have and they both have clips so I will splice that in the new connector and continue on. All right, guys, I've got all the connectors on the uh, wiring harness hooked up to all the fuel injectors. Now it's time to uh, unhook the uh, fuel line from right there. So I stuffed a few rags down there because inevitably there's going to be some uh, fuel spillage. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and disconnect that fuel connector right there. And we'll get this line out right here. So we have to disconnect it right there. Take that whole line out and we'll be replacing it with the two lines. Alright guys, if you don't have one already, you're going to need a fuel dis disconnect tool. I went to Harbor Freight and picked these up. This one on the package actually said it was for Ford OEM fittings. It's the 3 8 one, but it comes with a couple others. And it's kind of handy. It spreads open and we can get it around that uh, line down there and hopefully... The Got it. And yes, it is leaking fuel. So hopefully my rags are catching 
close to that fuel. So yeah, that tool definitely needed. Okay. So now we just gotta disconnect this other side. There we go. That whole clip kind of releases. There's a clip on each end. So let's see if it slides off. Oh, yep. So we didn't need the disconnect tool for this side. Just a little bit more fuel came out there. So the rag was definitely a good idea. So now the whole line came out. We got the whole line off. Okay, so our 90 degree. It's gonna pop up over here. It snaps right in, make sure that's secure. And then this guy is gonna kinda go like this. And we gotta connect it into this. So I don't know if we want that up top or down there. Does it say which way? doesn't have an in or an out, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I think we're going to go down like this, so it's not messing with that plastic cover. So we'll go like that. So that snaps in place like that, and then we just need our other little connector here. And that snapped in. like that guys let's check that out so that is right where the fuel line and that connector goes just like that and then uh, we will connect this guy that's our connector goes right into here so this is gonna get us all that fun readout info so gonna help us see what uh, percentage of E85 we're getting. All we need to do Ethanol. now is tidy up some of the wiring, get that where we want it. Um, the next step in the directions are to uh, start up the car with all this in place with the fuel lines and just the uh, wiring harness connected without the uh, module and just make sure everything still functions. It should function as normal like it has before and then if it does we'll plug in the module and see if it still works and then uh, we should be ready to fill it with some E85. So we're at like a eighth of a tank of gas. We got it pretty low. So it's 15 miles to empty. So maybe two gallons, three at the most. So we'll get it pretty full with E85 and see what happens. But well, let's get everything put back together here and start it up just to make sure we're still good. Right, guys, let's see if this thing still runs. Hopefully it does. covers back on and see down there the wires are kind of tried to uh, make them neat and stuff them down there in that channel um, if you follow the wires I've got them uh, like right going through here over here and then I did use a zip tie right here on the breather tube um, and then the wires all come across here over to here and then around the uh, cool or uh, windshield washer fluid and I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and shine some light on it. It's way down there underneath that silver part. I have it uh, mounted on the back side of that silver piece. So it's kind of facing down in a way. 
and then the cable goes in here on the bottom. So that's kind of how I wired it up. Um, I think it looks okay. Um, people won't know what that is. Um, I might need to try and get this out of the way. This is the ground cable, so it's kind of hanging out there. I might go underneath there and then up. I think that's what I'll probably do, make it a little cleaner. But it fired off with the uh, commander plugged in. Um, let me show you that real quick before we go get some... Engine is on, hood, doors ajar, yada yada, all those fun things. We have very little gas, 16 miles to empty, so we should be able to get some good E85 in here. Alright, so, on my phone here, we have the uh, ProFlex app. And there's the item there, so that's the connection. Connects through Bluetooth, I believe. System power, alright real-time ethanol value so right now we've got nine percent ethanol so that's pretty close to what they claim ten percent at the pump um, in the gas that I use I use 93 right now with ten percent ethanol so we are gonna go fill this thing up and then we'll get a reading for uh, what mm, seven-eighths of a fuel tank is of E85 so let's go get some E85 hey guys this is it we're at the pump about to fill this thing up with E85. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little anxious. I'm hoping that module does what it's supposed to. We fill this thing up with E85 and it doesn't work. Uh, it's probably not gonna run. So let's go ahead and check out the prices on E85 here. So this is one of the reasons why we're doing this uh, flex fuel kit. $259 for E85 or premium for $454. That's almost $2 a gallon cheaper. So Yes, it will be nice to have like 40 extra horsepower, but also cheaper on the wallet for sure. All right guys, I do not think that I have ever actually filled up with the 85, so it'll be interesting pulling out the uh, yellow handle. selecting the yellow handle. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It is going in. Pushing the button. The point of no return. It's getting full of E85. Why am I so anxious? Probably because they sent the wrong fuel lines and they sent a broken wiring harness so that's where I'm a little anxious right now hoping that that computer module is working see how many gallons of this stuff we actually get yeah we had her pretty empty smoke still going oh, almost 15 gallons holy moly holy moly $37.99 there's the moment of truth let's see if it starts right. good what do you think think it's gonna start
video. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the Advanced Fuel Dynamics uh, E85 Flex Fuel install. Um, so far, you know, minus the couple of hiccups there with them sending the wrong fuel lines and then that bad connector on the wiring harness. So that was kind of a bummer, but uh, I'll definitely put some tanks full of E85 in here and give you guys an update. But if you haven't already, please uh, 